before we get into the news, make sure to subscribe to my first and second channels and hit the notification bell to stay notified of future uploads. And follow my Instagram to get notified more frequently of MMA news before it is posted on my YouTube channel, and feel free to follow my Facebook and Twitter as well. Chris Cyborg gets dropped by the UFC after her match with Felicia Spencer at UFC 240. Notably, after Cyborg's match she was seen backstage with Dana White calling him out. Claiming that Dana White thought she was afraid of Amanda Nunes after her loss to her at UFC 232. After Cyborg's departure, Dana White commented in her interview with the ESPN's Laura Sanko on her stating, all this other sh asterisk t that she's putting out there again to avoid fighting the Manda Nunes. Message received. I get it. I'm going to release her from her contract. I will not match any offers. She is free and clear to go to Bellator or any of these other organizations and fight these easy fights. That she wants, Dana White said. Done. Done deal. I will literally today have my lawyer draft a letter to her team that she is free and clear to go wherever she wants. We're out of the cyborg business. Chris Cyborg responds via Instagram, Dana didn't want to give me the rematch, only a six fight contract. And the UFC unfortunately doesn't have girls in my division. Cyborg wrote in Portuguese. I'd die in the UFC without fighting and still being defamed, so the best option would be see other promotions that have my division. Where I could fight more often. Who knows, maybe one day Amanda and I will rematch. No one knows what tomorrow might bring. God's the one who makes my plans. I'm going to a place people knows about the word respect. Uncle Dana don't want to give the rematch. I can't be stuck with a promotion that don't have my division. I can't be fighting one time per year. And the boss try. Damage my brand. I'm fighter and human being too. Cyborg A states. Chris Cyborg coach Jason Perilla responds as well via Sirius XM. No, only Amanda Nunes. That's the only fight that gets me excited. Perillo said to Sirius XM. That's the only fight I want to see her fight, that's the only fight she needs to be fighting. Unfortunately, I don't have any control over that, I'm not her manager, I'm not her confidant. I'm her coach, I help her get ready for her fights. But, the only fight I have any interest is Amanda Nunes. I'm heartbroken about it, Perillo continued. Because I really do believe she can beat her. And I believe that Amanda has such amazing victories, she's really at the top of the food chain of the women's division, and that's where I believe Chris belongs and that's where I believe she should be. Afterwards, Cyborg apologizes to Dana White via her Instagram. Hey guys, I know that many people saw the video of my confrontation with Dana White after UFC 240 that was posted on my official YouTube channel, Twitter account and Instagram account. I want to let everyone know that the video was edited by my production team to make. It appear as though Dana told me, and listen whenever you hear me saying stuff, I'm not saying, dot the truth. Dana did not say that to me, and the subtitles in the video were incorrect. As you can see from the unedited video, Dana actually said, and listen, whenever you hear me saying stuff, I'm not saying negative things about you. Dana and I have had many disagreements during my career in the UFC, and I have been adamant about standing up for myself in situations where I feel my character and statements have been misrepresented and used against me. But I also take pride in being an honest person and a true professional. I take full responsibility for the actions that resulted in the edited video being posted on my social media accounts. 
we were wrong and I have addressed this issue with my production team so that it doesn't ever happen again in the future. Finally, I want to apologize to Dana White for posting the video. Even though we will continue to disagree about numerous issues, I will always stand up for doing what is right. Dana White responds to Cyborg's apology in the media after his contender series stating it must have killed her. Chris Cyborg responds via Twitter, Once I discovered what had been done by production I could not wait to apologize. I have prayed many times that one day myself and Dana White could talk face to face about our differences and find a way to move on. I am never too proud to offer an apology. Amy Kaplan, who was one of the reporters during Dana White's contender series Media Scum, stated on Twitter that the UFC president said that if Cyborg does indeed want the rematch with Amanda Nunes, she just needs to call me tomorrow. What else you True. Know? All right. The biggest story of the weekend was Chris Cyborg and Dana White. So Chris Cyborg published this video, the behind the scenes thing, and then she says, or her team said that this is the uncut, unedited version of the confrontation behind the scenes. And then in the video, you see Dana White saying something like, I didn't, you know, um, I didn't say anything, what, negative about you or whatever. Says, I just, yeah, he yeah. said like, I didn't, you know, he was, I'm not out. talking to you, uh, negative. Yeah. 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 And then they added in the word, I didn't tell the truth, something about the truth. They actually put that in subtitles. And then that this went is, out. This, anytime you see those, I don't mean to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see those videos, like remember when me and Nate Diaz had our issues? Yeah. yeah. They just doctored the whole thing. It's like, all right, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Here's my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most everyone in this room was here when Cyborg. Cyborg's been, Cyborg's been on the show three times. She always comes with her boyfriend. At least twice, yeah. Who's her manager. Yeah. That's the problem. I tell you guys all the time. Cyborg doesn't run her own social media. That. You know, Cyborg's one of the nicest people in the world. Cyborg had nothing to do with that video. Cyborg had nothing to do with that video. Um, it, it's her team and her, her manager and her boyfriend. Dude, you fucked her. You really, really fucked her. Yeah. You fucked her, man. And it was blatantly obvious that he didn't say that he didn't say the words, the truth. He didn't tell the truth. It was saying something else. It, it's so it's so easy to tell these days, man. It's just, you know. So Misha Tate was one of the first MMA people to actually openly say, hey, that it, there was a, something wrong with the edit. It was edit, edited horribly, right? And then since then. Yeah, if you're going to do it, you got to get way better at it, man. Like really fast afterwards, Dana White did a this production with Laura Sanko doing an interview. And then he mentioned that he was releasing Cyborg. Like she's free to go. Yeah, so he's he doesn't want to deal with it. Yeah, he doesn't deal with it anymore. I, I've, I've never understood it, man. Um, you know, Robbie, or not Robbie Lawler, uh, Woodley has had his issues. We go back and forth to the UFC. It never works out for anybody, ever. Yeah. Now, now if you're Cyborg, like even when things were good, she'd get a fight, she'd just keep antagonizing Dana. Again, that's not Cyborg. That was her boyfriend tweeting this stuff out. When he came on our show, right? I'm like, well, let me talk to Cyborg. And he's just going, going. I'm like, dude, yeah. I'm not here to shit on the UFC. This isn't a pity party. I want to talk about Cyborg. And now I do think Dana, and you can go back over time, has misrepresented Cyborg and he has taken a shot at him. That's horrible. And I think last week I went on that whole rant about Cyborg. Um, but it takes two to tango. Cyborg is just as guilty for her being released as Dana is doing the releasing. So it's like it was the perfect storm. Uh, Cyborg's mismanaged, and now she's in the ether. You know, she's all right. What are you gonna do? You can go over to Ryzen, one championship, go to Bella. There's no one really for her to fight, you know. So you could have uh, cemented your legacy and fought Amanda Nunes. If you beat her, you would add an, a rubber match. So that would have been fun. That's gone. So now, I don't know, man. It's kind of, you know, you're in the twilight of your career. You could do some, you know, I'm sure Japan and, uh, you know, some of these, the Asia markets would love to have her and they're, they're respectful and one, That's, one championship yeah. is probably your best bet. They probably pay a lot. Probably pay her a lot. There, there's a lot of stuff. She's doing a lot of international kind of outreach programs with Justin Wren and the water and Africa and the stuff she could do. I, I don't think, uh, and it's Scott Coker, he knows I love him, but I don't think Bellator's the answer. No one's going to watch her there. Uh, so I, I think one championship, maybe a rise in, you know, maybe PFL get a million bucks. <sighs> uh, that's, that's not the move. Yeah. 
you know you mentioned woodley remember afterwards after all that stuff woodley came out later saying like you know all that stuff i did it really wasn't worth it no remember he said that and he yeah. said it like in a it's very exhausting big, dude i'm telling you when sad voice but at the time when i was kind of still fighting and going at dana white i remember shot evans who's a close friend text and went telling your brother save it save it save it for when you're done and talk around your shows right now it's just draining your energy and you're never gonna win never even if you might be right and everyone knows you're right this ain't the time trust me thanks for watching make sure to leave a comment below of what you thought of the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified for more